Family Theater presents Cameron Mitchell. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Man in the Street. And now, here is your star and host, Cameron Mitchell. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Man in the Street, starring Cameron Mitchell as Steve. Pardon me. Do you know where I where I go to report a crime? You can report it to me. I'm a policeman. You? Detective Bureau. What sort of crime did you want to report? I killed a man. Maybe you better step in here. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Now, what about this? You say you killed a man. Mm-hmm. Last night. What's your name? We might as well get things in order. Stephen Maynard. Address? It's, um, uh, 7457 Kenworthy. Yeah? We're new in town. We just moved here a couple of days ago. Okay. 7457 Kenworthy. Phone? Haven't got one yet. How about the man he killed? I ran over him. And he didn't stop? Yes. Yes, I stopped. But when... When I look back, I, well, he, he he couldn't possibly have been. I stopped, I looked back, and then I drove on. Where did this happen? I was coming out of the parking lot of a market at uh, Kenworthy and Malden. Uh, well, anyway, I think it was Malden Boulevard. Brandon's, Braniff's, Bargain Market, something like that. Yeah, yeah. This is Detective Sergeant Nimmerman. I want all the information you can give me on a 480 last night. What time? Hey, I said what time? Oh, about uh, um, 11, 11.15. About 11 or 11.15 last night, Kenworthy and Malden Boulevard. Mm. That's right. I'll be here, extension 36. Thanks. It'll take them a few minutes to put the information together. Well, Sergeant, you said a uh, 480... Hit and run felony. How? How long? You know what I mean. I got a wife and family. How long do you think it should be? I don't know. I don't know. Well, turning yourself in will go in your favor. Yeah. And besides, things may not be as bad as you think. The human body can take a lot of punishment. No, I, I, I said I stopped and I, I looked back. The way, the way he. Was. <laughs> Detective Sergeant Nimmerman. You sure? Well, maybe it hasn't been filed yet. Make a complete check and call me back. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. What? Records doesn't have anything on any hit and run last night. Probably just a matter of something getting misfiled on. I wouldn't get my hopes up. I'm not. Want to tell me about it? Yeah, might as well. I have to tell you, I have the right to call your lawyer before you make any statement. I know, I know. And anything you say may be used against you. I'm guilty. What difference does it make? None, I guess. Go on. Well, I can't help... I can't help thinking. If... If things had had just been a little... Just a little different, the whole... The whole thing wouldn't have happened. How do you mean? Little things. Little things, you know. Like, well, I... I I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have even gone out last night if it hadn't been so hot. Uh Uh-huh. Maybe if it had been just a, a few degrees cooler. But it wasn't. What do I mean by 
little things? I'll tell you. A dog barking, maybe three blocks away. That's one of them. We'd spent most of the day getting moved into the house, and we were all tired. So tired, we'd gone to bed at nine o'clock. My wife, the kids, myself. And I'd, I'd gone to sleep almost before my head hit the pillow. Oh, if I'd only stayed asleep. About ten, I woke up listening to a dog barking. He wasn't close, but he was close enough. I was lying there on top of the blankets, waiting for him to shut up when Helen woke up. Steve. Yeah. You awake? No, no, I'm still sound asleep. It's too hot for you too. Uh, it was, but I didn't know it till stupid out there started barking. Tomorrow I'm going to take my deer rifle downtown. I'm going to trade it in for a dog rifle. You better not let Linda hear you talk like that. Uh, maybe I'll feel different in the morning. But right now I'm mad at that dog out there. I'm mad at the heat. And at having to drive hundreds of miles to this town where I don't particularly want to live. You don't have to be mad at me. It certainly wasn't my idea. What was that supposed to mean? We could have stayed home. Oh, well, we could. If you'd taken those courses, Mr. Thompson suggested. That again? Look, I'm an accountant. And a good one. I don't have There's to... There's no need to wake the children. I don't have to know how to run a comptometer and 16 other kinds of mechanical brain or anything else. That might increase your responsibility. And that's not it at all. Then I'd like to know what it is. I'd really like to know. Mr. Thompson told you if you'd take those courses, he'd advance you... Helen! Will you please keep your voice down? Helen, I don't work for Leslie Thompson himself anymore. I'm not a computing machine operator, and I don't intend to be, because I'm an accountant. That's the way I mean to earn my living. We're living in a new town, so let's just make the best of it. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Well... Let's just forget it. Let's just not refer to it again. I certainly didn't bring all right, it up. All right, all right. Listen. Hmm? To what? Your friend, the dog, he stopped barking. Sure. Why not? I'm wide awake now. Well, at least you got to sleep. Uh, you didn't? How anybody can sleep in weather like this is beyond me. Uh, tomorrow I'll have the air conditioning turned on. I'd have done it today, but there were so many other things to do. If we never have to move again, it'll be all right with me. Oh, where are those slippers? Oh, there. You getting up? Oh, I can't sleep. Maybe I can eat. But, Steve... Did you unpack any of the groceries yet? You said we'd all go out for breakfast, so I left them in the boxes. Besides, there isn't much but canned goods. Oh, great. Just great. I gave the vegetables and milk and things away before we left. Well, what'd you do that for? In this heat, they'd only have spoiled anyway. Where's the box with the canned goods? I think I'll have a look around anyway. Oh, wait a minute. I'll come with you. If I can find my slippers. No, I'll turn on the light. Oh, don't you dare. Hmm? We haven't got the curtains up yet. What will the neighbors think? All right, all right, all right. I know you're a little peeved. I, but... I'm sorry. Tired. The heat. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now, I think I put the groceries in the laundry hamper. And that was in the living room. And the can opener is... Hi, Dad. Hello, Mom. Hey, what are you kids doing out of bed? We couldn't sleep. Besides, I got hungry. Would you say he takes after your side of the family? Yeah, I guess so. You find anything? Sure, I prunes. No, I mean anything to eat. I found a can of cocoa. I told you, Lynn, there's no milk. We could make it with water. I'd almost rather have prunes. Well, let me look in that hamper. <laughs> How about this? Minute tapioca. It takes more than a minute, dear. Shortening beans? Cold beans? Yeah, you're right. There's just not anything here. I mean, it's quick. You know what I'd like? I'd like some watermelon. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Let us know if you find any watermelon in there, Pop. First thing, Ralphie boy. You know, it tastes pretty good at that, mm. wouldn't it? Here's some peanut butter. No bread. You don't have to have bread. You do if you're civilized, dear. Oh, gee. If it just only weren't so late. You mean you'd go to the store and get something? Mm -hmm. Hey, I know where there's an all-night market. We've been in this town exactly one day. How would you know that? We passed it on the way in. Had a big sign saying 24 hours shopping. Really, I'm not kidding you, Pop. Steve. Might as well. 
<laughs> the more I think about it, about a nice cold watermelon, Ooh. maybe with some cold cuts mm -hmm. and milk. Oh, boy, a picnic. Put on some clothes, Ralph. Right. Can I come, too? No, I think you'd better stay here with me. Well, why don't we all go? Please, Mother. Well, we've got the hamper unpacked. We might as well put the stuff on the kitchen shelves. Oh, Lynn, I think you'd better stay and help me. Oh, all right. You'll come right back, won't you? Sure thing, honey. Well, I guess I better trade in my PJs for some street clothes. Would you get me a popsicle? Helen? Yeah, I suppose it'll be all right. And Lynn, tell your brother to hurry up. I don't want this trip to take us all night. I intended to go right to the market, to shop, and come back. I didn't figure the trip to take more than, oh, 20 minutes. It took me nearly that long to disconnect the trailer from the car, and then another 10 for Ralph and I to get to the market. Potato chips, Pop? Yeah, grab a bag. Right. Well, that ought to do it, huh? We got everything? Yeah, I think so. This is crazy, you know what, Pop? <laughs> a picnic at midnight? Yeah. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Ralph, put the groceries up in the check stand for the lady, huh? Sure thing. Oh, a little warm tonight. More than a little. It was so warm, none of us could eat much dinner. So, well, we're having a late picnic to make up for it. That sounds like fun. <laughs> it is. Let's see now. Potato chips, 39 cents. Milk, 40 cents. Bread, 21. Butter, 68. Watermelon, uh, would you just put it right there on the scale? Mm, seven pounds at six cents a pound. 42 cents. Any cigarettes, razor blades? No, thanks. Uh, that'll be two dollars and eleven cents. No tax? Oh, no tax on food in California. You just arrive in the state? Today, as a matter of fact. I'm going to work for Pineman and Gibbons. The accounting firm? Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine. Uh, here's your change, sir. Thank you. Three, four, and five. Will you, uh, be living near here? We've rented a house a mile or so away. Oh, then maybe we'll see more of you. <laughs> we just opened last week. Naturally, we're on the lookout for new customers. Oh, that's why the searchlights, huh? Oh, that's right. Well, you'll probably see more of us. I got a hungry family. You got the groceries, Ralph? Got them, Pop. Good night. Good night. Well, I hope we got everything. Can't think of anything we might miss. Ice cream. Uh, but a night might go good with watermelon. Ice cream. That's right. Oh, I forgot to get Linda the popsicle I promised her. Look, Ralph, you wait in the car while I get it. It'll only take a minute. It didn't even take a minute. I was out of the store and into the car in about as much time as... Well, as it takes to tell about it. But those few seconds, they were part of the chain of little things that changed my life. Get it? Yep. Still hungry? Bet. Ah, uh, nice market, huh? Yeah. With that parking lot this size, need those searchlights. Too bad they're not on now. Well, I guess this is the exit that puts us back on Kenworthy, isn't it? I think so, Pop. Look out! The man! man! You hit him! You, you hit him! Oh. I didn't even see him. I didn't see him. Why? Why? Why did this have to happen to me? Why? Why did he have to be there? Why? It looks bad. It looks real bad. We better see what we can do. Will you stay where you are? But Pop! Will you close that door? But the man might need help. I said close that door, Ralph. There's nothing you can do for him now. Not after he. He's dead. Yes, he'd have to be dead. No, close that door. You, you, you're going to leave him there? You can't meet it. Look back there. Look. Do you think he could possibly be alive? No. No, I don't think so, but, but just leave oh, him. Shut up. Shut up. I've got to think. I've got to think. What am I going to do? What am I going to do, Ra Ralph? Do, do you see anyone coming out of the market? Pop. Look back. Do you see anyone coming out of that market? No, sir. No one. Then there's no way in the world they could tie it to me, then. Pop. Pop, it's hit and run. That's enough. Sir... It's not enough. What do you know about it? What happens to you, Ralphie? And to Linda? And to your mother if I go to jail? Will you tell me that? It was an accident, Ralph. A man was killed, and my going to jail isn't going to help that or change it, is it? 
Hancock. He can't run over a man. No. So is the world supposed to come to an end? Ralph, Ralphie, boy, I've got responsibilities. I have to leave him there, don't you see that? I've got responsibilities to support Linda and your mother and you and, 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 and see that you get to finish your education. Don't use me. Pop, think. Please think it over. Think, think, think. I am thinking. I am thinking a man with a wife and children. What if he had a wife and children? What? What if he did? Hmm? What if he did? Oh, what do you know about it? What do you know about life except from books and what you see on television? What do I know about life? I know the difference between right and wrong. You, you, you think I don't? Hmm? Pop. Pop. I, I think... I think what you're doing is the crummiest thing I've seen in my whole life. It's not... It's not what I'd like to do. Ralph, boy, when... When you've got a wife and kids who... Well, depending on you, when you're older, then maybe you'll understand. You're thinking about the family. Oh. That's a laugh. You're afraid for yourself. That was the most cowardly... That's enough. Don't you ever hit me again. I'll teach you some respect for me. Oh, what's the use? The wrong word, wasn't it? Respect. You go through with this and you'll never be able to, to teach me respect for you again. Well, back at last. Did you bring me my popsicle? Go to bed, Lynn. You can't tell me to go to bed, Ralph Maynard. Go to bed, Linda. But what about the picnic? There isn't going to be any picnic. But you promised. Mother? What's all this about? Did you get the groceries? They're in the car. Daddy says no picnic. I told you to go to bed. But it's too hot. And besides, it's not fair. Len, you and Ralph go to bed. Sure, Mom. The air is beginning to smell bad anyway. Come on, Lynn. Did I do something wrong? No, Lynn. You didn't do anything wrong. Close the door behind you, Ralph. Yeah, Mom. Now, will you be good enough to tell me what this is all about? Well? Oh. We had an accident. You wrecked the car? Not that. Oh, thank goodness. I wish it had only been that. Only that? Coming out of the... Coming out of the parking lot at the market, a man stepped in front of the car. You hit a man with a car? Helen, he came out of nowhere. He, he must have almost jumped in front of me. I didn't even see him until, until it was too late. Oh, Steve. There was nothing I could do. Nothing. Is, is he dead? Yeah, I think so. Oh, the poor man. <laughs> Did he have... Wait... Did you say you thought he was dead? Don't you know? Yes, of course I know. He's... He's dead. The way Ralph was acting toward you, you don't know, all do right, you? All right, all right. It was an accident and I know the man was killed. I know. You... You did stop, Steve. You did stop. Of course. Of course I stopped. Otherwise, how would I know? Afterward... Afterward, we stopped and we looked back. You looked back? You mean you left him where you hit him? Oh, Steve! There wasn't even a chance. Look, would it have helped him if I'd have gone to the police? If I'd have called the police, could it have possibly helped him? But it's the law. Mm. And it's the law because it's the only moral, the only right thing to do. Oh, God forgive you. Right thing to do? Helen, what would have happened if, I, if I'd reported it? Do you know that, do you? You must be out of your mind. If it happened, as you say, No you... matter how it happened, it's manslaughter, isn't it? And suppose with my luck, it's ridiculous, but suppose... Suppose I were acquitted. I'd still... We'd still be ruined. Do you think any firm would hire a man after that kind of publicity? You were thinking about your job? Well, you and the kids would find it pretty tough going if I didn't have one. Oh, if only we'd stayed home. 
If only we'd never come to this town. Oh, if only I hadn't been awakened by a barking dog, or you hadn't suggested that ridiculous picnic, or if Lynn hadn't asked for that popsicle, and if I hadn't gone back for it. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't. It was circumstances. If things had just been a little different, if they'd just been a few seconds different, just a few... Steve, are you really going through with this? Somebody's got to take care of the family. What about his? My duty is to my family. We both know where your duty lies. I'm going to lie down. I don't expect to sleep. I don't know how you expect to spend the night, but if I were you, I'd think over what I'd done. Think it over well, Steve, and tomorrow morning you'd better turn yourself in. Turn myself in? If you do, I'll let the children think it was your idea. But if you don't... If you don't, tomorrow morning... I'm going to call the police. Are you threatening me? I'm promising you. But have you forgotten your other promises? You're still my wife. You're supposed to stick by me. Not when you'd put me at enmity with God. And when you ask me to share your crime by keeping silent. That's what you're doing, Steve. <laughs> I spent the rest of the night driving. I don't know where I drove. But... Well, after it got light, I stopped at a gas station and I asked directions to the police station. You know the rest, Sergeant. Well, what now? Man slaughters one crime, hit and runs another. You've compounded a felony, Mr. Maynard. That could be worth... Sergeant Nimmerman, hold on a minute. As I was saying, Mr. Maynard, it could be worth from 10 to 15 years. I've done a lot of thinking, Sergeant. If the man had a family... Well, I haven't much. Some insurance I could convert Wait to... Wait This phone call could be about your victim. We can worry about survivors later. Well, this is a memory. You sure? What about the night before? Oh, for more than three days. What was that? Okay, thanks. Maynard, you don't look like a crank. Crank? There have been no 480s in the county for three days, and we haven't had an unsolved hit and run in more than two months. But, Sergeant, I hit him. I know I hit him. My son was with me. I hit him. All right. Only one thing left to do, then. What? I have to go down to the market and find out. Come on. Yes, as a matter of fact, this gentleman's son just came in asking about the same thing. He did? He was just as evasive as you two. He just asked if anything unusual had happened in the parking lot last night. And what did you tell him? I told him yes. He's in the storeroom now, checking up on it. It's right through that door if you care to see for yourself. Say, would you mind telling me what all this is about? Well, last night... Perhaps later, miss. Come on. Come on. Thank you, miss. Oh, you are. But she was here last night. She'd know. First, you want to keep it a big secret. Now you want to confess to everybody. Keep your shirt on for a minute. Ralph. Hi. You're Ralph Maynard. Yes, sir. What's this? Oh, no. Is that? That's the man you hit. <laughs> a straw man. It's a, a scarecrow. Nothing but a scarecrow. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hit anybody. <laughs> hey, how about that, Rob boy? <laughs> yeah, how about that? He's, he, he's a dummy. He's made out, out of straw. It, it, it's probably part of the decoration for the market opening. Everything's all right now, huh? Hmm? Yeah, everything's all right. See you later. Well, you're going home? Ralph, I'll take you. I'll walk, thanks. But Ralph, boy! <laughs> oh, well. Young boys need exercise. <laughs> A straw man. <laughs> All my little things added up to nothing. 
Well, Sergeant, I guess that closes your case. Oh, it does for me. But how long will it take you to close it? Huh? With your wife and son. My sergeant, look at it. Look, it's only a, a scarecrow. Yeah, but last night when you were making all your big decisions for your wife and boy, you didn't know that. As far as you're concerned in their eyes, he might as well have been flesh and blood. But don't you think so, Mr. Maynard? Here is your star again, Cameron Mitchell. Thank you, Tony. In the play just presented on Family Theater, I played the part of a coward. And I'll confess, I, I really don't care much for that kind of a part. It's a lot more fun to be a, well, to be a two-fisted cowboy or a knight of the round table or some other kind of a swashbuckling hero who meets his problems head on and naturally solves them all in a brave and fearless manner. It's more fun. But unfortunately, life is seldom like that, except in radio or TV or movies. Most of the problems we have to face today just aren't solvable with a six-gun or a sword. Oh, they involve bravery, all right. Mostly, they're problems of decision, of choosing the right thing to do. Steve, in our story tonight, had that kind of a problem to solve. He came up with the wrong answer. He failed the test, and the cost, the cost was pretty high. He lost the respect of a son who had always looked up to him. Who knows how long it would take him to get that respect back again because of that one wrong decision. But maybe we shouldn't think too harshly of him because every day you and I are called on to make decisions, perhaps not quite as important, but of the same nature as Steve's. And many times we too fail. You know, I can't help thinking that maybe it's because so many of us try to meet these tests alone, and that's wrong. God gave us an instrument to help us meet our problems in life. And he wouldn't have given it to us unless he meant for us to use it. That instrument is prayer. Through prayer, we can have divine assistance just for the asking. Oh, prayer won't have God solving our problems for us. But it will get us the help we need to solve them ourselves. Prayer should be a daily practice. For just through daily prayer, we can keep God close to help us, to help us with those almost daily problems, problems of decision, problems of choosing the right thing to do. And when you pray, do it with the other members of your family. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Man in the Street, starring Cameron Mitchell. Others in our cast were Jim Nusser, Virginia Gregg, Barry Froner, Gayan Kelly, and Charlotte Lawrence. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of state, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present...
The McCoy, starring Chuck Connors. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.